Welcome to Momentum Monday. Today is uh, June 16, 2024. Happy Father's Day to all fathers. Howard, you. how did you I spend your weekend? Literally just got off the couch watching golf. Did you? It was amazing. The uh, I'm an investor in LA golf, and Bryson is the uh, one of the founders, and he's like an engineer freak, and he came up with the technology. Yeah, so it's a pretty cool day. Yeah, good news. Good news. Really good golf. All right, take us through this uh, this market. Yeah, we're seeing more of the same. Um, large caps really continue to shine. Anything related to AI uh, continues to outperform. And this is why we see the QQQ, the S&P 500 um, are at all-time highs. Obviously, uh, the way they're structured, the mega caps, the large cap stocks account for a very large percentage yeah. of those indices. And they're really keeping them afloat and uh, pushing them to all-time highs. Yeah. Um, the Nasdaq 100 is up 17% year to date. In the meantime, uh, versus 2000, which has, you know, 2000 stocks, small cap stocks is down, down on the year. So yeah. pretty significant divergence. We continue to see that the market continues to get led by a small number of stocks. And um, everyone just wants to own anything related to AI, probably for a good reason. NVIDIA made new all-time highs. Even It continued to go higher even after the stock split. And at the same time, you know, their big competitor, AMD, is kind of struggling below its uh, 50 days. So it will be interesting to see if they'll be able to form a new base here above the rising 200 day. They probably just need more time mm -hmm. or the market is mm -hmm. waiting to see if they're going to release something that is remotely close to what nvidia has but also anything else like ai servers like hp they they broke out after earnings uh, kept making uh, all-time highs um, dell sold off but potentially could hold here near the 50 day and smci is also starting to wake up um avago they they beat earnings estimates, broke out to all time high. So anything really related to semiconductors mm -hmm. uh, has been and it continues to be on fire. All of those stocks are at all time highs or near all time highs, and really anything related to AI. Our uh, land research, I'm trying to what they do. Yeah, it's just it's semiconductors, right? Like yeah. so, it's, so you could. I was going to say. You know, the divergences are there, and you're going to hear a lot this week, but when Apple, Google, I mean, I hate Microsoft, you got to include, but Apple, Google, and NVIDIA, which are kind of like, uh, Microsoft probably the most interesting company because they're the most diversified, but when Apple, NVIDIA, Google are 10 trillion, it's like silly to say that the rest of the market isn't competing for those three it's bigger than the whole Chinese market. So I think what, I think it's just so, I'm trying to help people come to grasp with it. Cause you know, I went to indexing mostly mm -hmm. for this reason, right? Like it's so hard to, to figure out how you would break into the planet. It's so hard for these companies to break in. You know, they're just such a moat. Um, so even though, uh, Open AI is doing everything they can. I know what lobbyists to kind of surround themselves with regulation and ensure that they win. Apple's just basically wrapped them into the iPhone. So it's like, okay, well, you're going to own Apple or Open AI. So I think people have decided, right? Like, AI is a feature. So in a, in a world that AI is a feature, the only two things that are interesting to me are like the big content companies. So obviously Meta, which I hate, but like they benefit. Um, and then Netflix and Spotify, right? Netflix, again, if it's not a false breakup, this is going to go, I mean, if we look at the, uh, we talk, you and I both own it, but we, we, we've both been bullish on it. You, I think you, yeah. Um, but if you look at the monthly, Right. So you come out of COVID, 
they 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 got the they didn't really get a COVID bump. Well, I guess they got a COVID bump, right? And then Ackman and everybody went down with the ship. I and I remember getting stopped out of it, and then um, you know through indexing and buying it back, and then, and then chasing it higher over the last hundred points. Um, but who benefits from AI? Netflix, right? You could say that AI sucks so far, but they're going to benefit from because they got the long tail of content. Same with Spotify, you know, even though then you're kind of hedged Spotify by owning Apple. Look at Spotify, basically all time highs, right? And anybody you wanted out of that, if you go to the monthly, is out of that stock. Yeah. And it's hard for people to, chase this because they go, oh, should have bought it at, at 80. But I mean, in a world where I don't use many apps, Spotify is probably the one I use the most. <laughs> and probably has the least amount of costs. Um, so anyway, Spotify and Netflix are interesting. Obviously meta because everybody lives on it. Um, but then it's NVIDIA, Apple, Google. So it's basically, that's why the big the index is moving and if you pick stocks you're kind of stuck not picking you know small caps uh, and and so that's why you have the degenerate let me share my screen why you have this huge divergence okay let's uh, go yeah, ahead. Let me share can you see let me just share so i'll show you one thing that just blows my mind which which goes to my degenerate economy so here you know we're, we're, this this was interesting um, again, let's not have to do a stock chart, but the uh, advertising, as much as we're worried about like TikTok and like fake news, I mean, look, again, you can say TV was fake news, you know, but 30 years ago, it probably wasn't when there was no cable. So if you look at the yearly ad spending on TV, which is supposedly, you know, Fox, CNN, and where people go for content, you can see that with that trend in yearly ad spending, guess where that content, that TV content, media content is going to get? It's going to get more opinionated, cheaper, worse, right? And at the same time, these influencers that are like trying to be Tucker Carlson 2.0, um, you can see why they don't even care. They are cave kowtowing to being crazy um, because that's how they get paid. So you have the, the same amount of money is going to get spent, but it's going to get spent on people that are willing to become the independent Fox News, right on TikTok and CNN. So you're, I don't know how the polarization ends, right? Like we've got two political candidates, one scared to, to reign in the left and the right, I don't even know what they are. So it's like, this trend is going to continue. So who does that benefit? That benefits Facebook. It benefits, you know, independent influencers and crazy people. And obviously it benefits Netflix and Spotify. Okay, so that's the first chart I wanted you to look at. This other chart you're going to hear a lot about, right? This is the divergences we talked about, right? But the divergences just may make sense. Meaning, okay, I'm like definitely being more cautious here. I'm not looking to add any exposure. In fact, I sold some some tech QQQ last week. So you had this incredible run, right? You got everybody raising price targets. You have bearish analysts throwing in the towel and raising price targets. I mean, you do have the breakouts in Apple and NVIDIA, don't, and it's or Apple, Netflix, Spotify. But you're just not getting broad participation. It's a lot of stocks are rolling over in software and tech. And the U.S. dollar, here, okay. you see this? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so you can see while the, the, while the small caps are struggling, right? You can see, so you see in the video, everybody thinks, like this is a beautiful explanation of the degenerate economy and why we might be seeing these divergences like from a week ago, I think that I posted this, but like the stock market kind of makes sense when you look at the cash flow in the video and the share price, right? That's like growth investing 101, right? The share price follows cash flow and growth. And then degenerate economy 101 is just pure 
technical analysis on what people wanted to Right, like there's no fundamentals at Floki, never will be. Um, and again, so it's purely technical because we're reverse and go to zero tomorrow. But I'm saying everybody's talking about the divergences, but there's this whole other market going on, this degenerate market that that's you know unrelated to you know the divergences, right? So, anyways, I thought people should see that. Let me stop sharing. Okay. okay. So, so again, like. There's this. There's a lot of different things going on in the market, yeah, uh, and it's very difficult, right? Like it's very simple if you just index, right? Yeah, but and, what if instead of indexing, you just pick the ten stock that you that you just mentioned? You know the the big five, the big. Okay, six. You're basically indexing. What I try and do is, you know, when I'm doing is have two or three. Oh, but the rest of the stocks are pulling you back. You can get better, yeah, better yeah, returns. I've been wrong every other any any kind of small cap that I think could break out is not worked for me. So, um, anyways, it's it's kind of one of those years. I think with 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 the complete, you know, outrageous price large cap stocks. I don't think it can continue. The question is, will that rotate in the small caps? Right. Will the money coming out in NVIDIA eventually? I mean, it's interesting because um, interest rates have actually you know, declining and the small caps cannot find a bit even with interest rates crashing down. Or well, because the, the U.S. dollar is it's just in the jihad too. Yeah, the U.S. dollar is stronger it's against the other it's major big currencies. Move, the biggest currency. So that, that definitely... But to your point regarding the, the current bearish market divergences, I mean, keep in mind that the entire Russell 2000, it's in the, uh, the totality of its market cap is like 2.7 trillion of all the 2000 companies. I mean, this is, you know, smaller than just Microsoft or NVIDIA or Apple. And right. if you take like the big, the big six in tech, uh, Meta, Google, Microsoft, yeah. Apple, NVIDIA, I mean, they, they are $15 trillion. So maybe our measures of market breadth, Correct. maybe they, they don't. That's what I was trying much. to get a point is like, not that market breadth doesn't necessarily work. It's just that it's just one signal. And the signal is borked at this point because three companies are 10 trillion. Any of three of the top five are like basically $10 trillion. Yeah. Pretty yeah. diversified. They're definitely global. They're the biggest hedge funds in the world. And, and they're each other's customers in many ways in that, you know, when Cisco in 1999 was in a bubble, in the internet bubble, 90% of those companies that owed Cisco money couldn't pay, right? In this bubble, not like NVIDIA is going to get stiffed. Yes, eventually growth will slow, right? But that cash isn't going to get written off. That cash is just going to get spent. Now, it could get spent poorly by NVIDIA, but this is a lot different than the 99 bubble and the great financial crisis. Because these, these companies, while overvalued, um, don't have the same risk profile for their overvalued as the previous. So something different will have to happen to bring these down. It's not going to be the government. Uh, probably won't even be war. Um, because we've got two going on. Um, so, I mean, for people that want to guess, I don't know. So I'm saying the trend is your friend. And if you're indexing the semis in QQQ, you know, I don't have a good reason other than you're nervous because it's gone so well to sell. Other than some divergences, which can be easily explained away as we just did. So... That's it. I think you got to be really careful with new positions here because it has been a great run. And like with Netflix, I'm not going to give the extra stock that I bought any room, right? If it reverses, I'm out. Yeah. I mean, yeah. speaking of content, maybe the other one, like Pinterest recently Correct. broke out. It's kind of holding their earnings gap. And also Snapchat, they're also holding the earnings gap, potentially setting up here if it can go back above yeah. 16. Yeah. The valuations are crazy though for the niche, whereas Netflix is global and diversified, and so is Spotify. 
So again, you know, they may have more bang for the buck though, uh, Snapchat and, and Pins. But you're right, the, the, anything with content, AI is going to improve, including stock to it. I can give you anecdotally, stock to is growing really fast and AI helps us think through new products much quicker. So, um, you know, uh, Reddit's doing well, really. Yeah, they're really holding well. Yeah, so that's kind of, you've got, and Reddit, so you've got the content proxies. Those are the companies with like, high user engagement and I include stock books in that because I, I, I it's a very engaged community in Reddit and obviously Meta and Pinterest you know and Pinterest probably the best because it's just so sticky uh, with people that have money you know and, and, their, and their big markets are like spending women shopping in homes you know but I don't use the product so I don't I don't have a feel but I know the people that use it still love them so, so I'll keep it short. Happy Father's Day, Ivan. Unless you see anything else that we should cover, but I think it's the semiconductors in in the big caps. Yeah, I mean, there's there's some decent setups in uh, select decent setups on the long side, but um, over the past couple of weeks, I also reduced uh, long exposure, took some profits in uh, some of the longer term swings I have, like uh, at least partially MU. Uh, COHR, um, NVIDIA, like I've been taking profits uh, on strengths so yeah. far, so far I've been wrong because they continue to go up, Right. but I'm fine with that. I'm fine if I'm, if I'm early because you can find other setups. Right. The, and like the, you know, the Netflix setup, you know, you can kind of trade with the market, right? The, you have the market turns around um it's kind of going to trade like the qqqs but it's like really poised to surprise people on the yearly breakout forgetting you know just you know the the daily and the weekly chart you know there's a, there's a chance for a big move there because they just they just have been basing for so long and i don't think people what's the valuation of netflix uh 288 oh, billion. Jesus, 300 billion so i don't know Again, like there's no lecture thing here. It's it's just it's just uh, kind of speculation at this point. But I think it's that middle of the market that's kind of dangerous because I think people are crowding into this index trade. It'll end, right? But fee people with cash are just piling in. And again, it, yeah. it, any uptick in rates, I think, brings us down um, from here. And I think if rates continue to drop, I think the, the the money could still come out of the big caps and roll into the small caps. So um should be an interesting week. Is there any big earnings or anything this week or no? Um, I'm not aware of that. Probably, yeah. So I can yeah. answer. So I think it's just kind of just keeping on the market. All right, everybody have a great week. Oh, I, I think MU, MU is reporting uh, maybe next week. It might be next week, not this week. But the MU is coming up, yeah. I doubt they surprise other than to the upside, so... That's one we've been talking about year long, or you're out of it right now. Uh, I sold half. I, I, I'm still on. Yeah, it looks good. Yeah. All right, everybody, have a great week. All right, see you next week. See you. Bye.